what we want to, wanted to talk about was just um, the larger international organizations that are involved in our Southern African collaborations. Um, the OIE Terrestrial Code, so the Terrestrial Code is just this book that somebody wrote with a whole lot of standards in it. And in particular chapters 8.14 on rabies and 7.7 .7 on stray dog control. And it's not really stray dogs, but we had a big fight about it and we all know what stray dogs mean in that context. Okay. Um, we'll just mention something about a Southern African sub-regional rabies workshop that took place last year, the Namibian Dog Mediated Rabies Elimination Project and a few other things. Okay. So the um, OIE recently adopted this chapter on rabies and rabies control. And uh, the chapter 7.7 .7 on stray dog population control is now being reviewed so that the two can be linked. Because the OIE considers it important that rabies control and pop dog population management are in fact linked. And this aligns with the global strategic plan that you heard about earlier today and focuses on responsible dog ownership and this is what we would like to use as our sort of guideline in the Southern African region. So the fact is that a third of the um, rabies deaths in the world occur in Africa. So it's important that we pay attention to this. And that was um, the introduction to this OIE sub-regional workshop in Namibia last year. I'm not, I think it was April last year, anyway. Um, so in Africa, the AU IBAR is responsible for the continental mandate of rabies control. And the regional economic communities are responsible for the regions and ours is the Southern African Development Community. We refer to it as SADC. Um, in SADC, only three of the 16 countries actually have rabies elimination strategies and um, two of them have drafts at the moment. So there's a lot of work to be done, to be done if we want to eliminate rabies or dog-mediated human rabies by 2030. Um, so in this workshop, um, it was acknowledged that increased political will was um, required. Cross-border collaborations were really important. Um, definitely One Health, um, working together with health departments, um, donor support, and then the Pan-African Rabies Control Network would be the umbrella organization that would also facilitate the process. Um, the tools that already exist for countries in our region and in other regions to utilize in um, implementing this rabies control uh, strategy, um, the one that we, for example, used in our animal welfare twinning program was the performance of veterinary services, PVS, which is like a self-assessment and external assessment process of the OIE. And it points out where the gaps are, where the needs are, where a country needs to improve something. And um, that tool can be used then also for the rabies elimination strategy. Um, workshops, um, uh, are being planned um, and then a regional pathway for the region needs to be agreed on. And then part of the uh, strategy needs to include targeted vaccination. For example, in Botswana, Celebi, Pikwe, there's uh, an abandoned mine. You were talking about mining earlier and this is an abandoned mining town. Dogs were left behind, became feral and um, became a big rabies challenge. And in fact, last year, they, the Botswana um, government had the World Rabies Day in that locality so that people could be more aware. Um, so the N Namibian government has a, 
um, plan. It's got two phases. It, the first phase was 2016 to 2018. Um, funded by the German government, technical support of the OIE and working together with the Rabies Lab in Germany, the Friedrich Löffler Institute. Um, their National Rabies Control Strategy was launched in 2015 and they did a pilot project in one small area and then they expanded this into eight um, northern communal areas. So they're right at the top of Namibia on that map. Um, communal areas, so a lot of free roaming animals, and they found that it was really important to engage properly with stakeholders, particularly traditional authorities, as we've already heard quite a few times. Um, and in Namibia you have lots of different ethnic groups and languages. Each little province almost has its own language. So that's a challenge that needs to be addressed and that's why it's so important to have community champions helping in each community. Um, they're now looking forward to an OIE lab twinning project. At the moment we have a rabies reference laboratory in Pretoria at Unistapurt, but um, the central veterinary laboratory in Namibia will um, is looking towards also becoming a reference laboratory. So reference laboratories are also OIE mediated, um, supported by the OIE to improve disease surveillance and these kind of um, elimination strategies. Is everybody still with me? Yes. Was I a good Andrea up to now? Yes. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> so this is my part. Um, so what the OIE did for us, they first told us that we are really poor at animal welfare in South Africa with a PVS tool, the um, PVS, okay. And then they gave us the resources to improve on that. Okay, so we are busy building capacity in um, animal welfare and writing new animal welfare legislation so that we can, we will be able to implement OIE standards in South Africa and hopefully in the regional community as well. So the Parent Institute was that long name in Italy and um, it lasted for about 21 months cost nearly 90,000 euro, although I'm still very peeved that we didn't spend all of that <laughs> and it went back <laughs> um, and it ended at the end of last year. So the idea was really just to um, capacitate staff at the Faculty of Veterinary Science. We had one state veterinarian on our team and we also had a state veterinar veterinarian from Namibia that was part of the program. Harmonization of animal welfare assessment procedures was one of the objectives. Um, and developing an animal welfare community of practice in our region. Um, and as I said, we've started working on new animal welfare legislation and we're hoping then not to reinvent the wheel for each of the different countries in the community, but to then be able to assist them to adapt it to their um, contexts. Um, so the final objective of this um, twinning program and so obviously the, the institute in Italy is, um, <laughs> is uh, themselves an OIE collaborating center for animal welfare and the idea is that our faculty will now be able to um, apply for recognition ourselves as an OIE collaborating center for animal welfare. So that's our um, job to do now. That is myself with Paolo Dalla Villa, who was the Italian team leader, and Luigi Iannetti, whom we dubbed the Prince of Pretoria, because he spent so much time in Pretoria do during all these training sessions that we had to give him an honorary title. <laughs> so I'm not going to take you through the whole process, but it was a whole lot of training that they came to do in South Africa, and some of us also went to Italy for some of it. The ones that are highlighted in red refer to what we are talking about at this conference. So we did um, dog population management and it was very interesting to compare the Italian system to the South African system, not least because they're extremely different. Um, although the principles are pretty much the same, it's just the way it happens and looks at the moment in South Africa is very different. 
This is a little um, uh, model that we came up with. It was part of the homework we had to do relating to dog population management. Um, so we said it's really important to consider, does this thing not work? Okay, maybe I don't know how to use it. It's fine, there we go. So uh, we feel we should first um, consider people before we consider dogs, which is very counterintuitive for a vet, but that's, you all know that by now. So we said the 4E plus Irish model is what we need to be doing. And it's actually what you know anyway. But the four E's um, refer to inquire first, which means ask the community whether we may come and do something here. And if they say no, go away, then that's toughies and do that. Then engaging with them and listening and um, working on a plan together and through the engagement then educating the community and in the process of all of that enabling or empowering the community so that they can take ownership of their own issues. Um, then we have knowledge of rabies prevention and we have responsible dog ownership. Now we've sorted out the people. Then the next level would be to do the dogs which is identify, register, immunize, sterilize, keep healthy, Irish. Okay. If you can come up with better acronyms there, then you're welcome to um, make some suggestions. Um, and then just to end off, the um, Enhancing Research for Africa Network, AFUN, was literally born out of our twinning project with the Italian institution because um, they recognized that there were many different levels at which they were already um, engaging with um, African countries, North and South, and they decided to sort of put it all together into one, under one umbrella, uh, which is called the Enhancing Research for Africa Network. Um, and through this organization um, or entity, um, where, which consists of seven working groups, there are ones for um, uh, TB and brucellosis and other things and then we have the animal welfare working group. Through this entity we will now continue to get that recognition as an OIE collaborating center for animal welfare. We are going to be doing it through at least one PhD coming out of that process so we're trying to sort of do different things by achieving the same goal and um, we had our first big meeting last week in Vintuk and um, there the action plan was finalized. So this is also OIE funded or supported and um, it's really quite a privilege to be able to be involved in that. Um, so um, in conclusion then we believe that um, to deliver zero by 30 in southern Africa we will have to do a lot of capacity building and a lot of collaborating but it is possible and incorporating dog population management in rabies control gives us a nice one health platform that we can use to improve animal welfare and of course the old African proverb that you probably have heard before if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together and then right at the end just to say thank you and there's Andrea with her dog, Millie.